Okay, now that we know all those vocabulary of what happens when you've got parallel lines cut by a transversal, now we're going to apply some angles and some numbers and some algebra to solve them. So assume um, that line L is parallel to line M, which is parallel to line N. So basically I have a parallel line, a parallel line, and a parallel line. So you could have three, not just two. That means that this line right here would be my transversal. So I know all my vocabulary words would work out for this problem. So given that angle 1 is 108 degrees, so I'm going to say goodbye angle 1, you're now 108 degrees. Um, find the remaining angle measurements. So remember I said that if you know one, you know them all. Okay. So you get to use your favorite vocabulary words to figure it out. Um, I like vertical angles. So I know 3 is also going to be 108. Um, you could go from 3 to 7 by the confusing one corresponding. So I also know that 7 is going to be 108 degrees. Um, you could also then bump to 5 because it was vertical. Or you could say that these two angles right here, 3 and 5, they are alternate interior. Therefore, they were congruent. So... 5 was also 108. Um, you could also say that 7 and 9, they're alternate interior angles, so they're congruent. Then you could also say 11 is vertical, and so it was 108 as well. Set number 9, 108. Okay, so basically half of the measurements are going to be 108. To figure out the other measurement, you need to create a linear pair. And so we know lines are 180 degrees. So 180 minus 108 is 72. Okay, so angle 2 is 72. So then that means, honestly, the rest are 72, but here's why. So you've got 2 and 4 are vertical, so that one is also 72. Um, 4 and 6 are alternate interior. And so it's also 72. 6 and 8 are vertical, so they're equal. It's also 72. Um, 8 and 10 are alternate interior, therefore it's 72. And then you've got 10 and 12 is alt or vertical, and so it's 72. Or you could have said, hey, that's a linear pair. I know it's 72. All right. So if you know 1... You can figure them all out, and that's what makes this so much fun. I know you're having so much fun. All right, so that these are the easier problems because I've just got straight numerical answers. You can also have equations and set up um, things with a variable and solve. So first off, the relationship between this angle and this angle is the tricky one that no one remembers. Corresponding. They are in corresponding positions. You've got one on the inside, one on the outside. You could basically move them up and they would overlap each other. So I know corresponding angles are congruent, which means they're equal. So I would say 18x minus 6 should equal 17x plus 1. And then I would solve. I like to move my variables to the left side. That would give me 1x or x minus 6 equals 1. Add 6. So x would be 7. Now I could check to see if my answer was right by substituting them in. So I could say 17 times 7 plus 1 would be 120 degrees, which makes sense. That's an obtuse angle. You could also plug it in up here. 18 times 7. 18 times 7 would be 126 minus 6 would be 120. So yay, my answers were equal, that made sense, and I had an obtuse angle, okay? Now, if you had another letter, for example, over here that said Y, um, if I know that this measurement is 120 degrees, I have a linear pair, so I would know that Y would be 60 degrees, okay? So again, if you know one angle, you know all of the rest of the angles, okay? All right. Moving on, relationship 
Um, the relationship between these two angles are also the most common ones missed. Um, they would be same side interior. Remember SSI. I know same side interiors equal 180 degrees. And so I would say X plus 70 plus X plus 120, those two together should equal 180. So then I would combine like terms to get 190. Got two X's would equal 180. Subtract 190. 2x equals negative 10, so x would be negative 5, okay? It is okay to get x as a negative value. It's not okay if you plug it in and you get a negative value. So if I plug it in, um, 120 take away 5 will be 115. And then 70 take away 5 would be 65. So let's make sure if that works. 115 plus 65 does equal 180. I know I'm right. Okay? So always plug it back in and substitute to make sure your answer makes sense and equals up to 180 or each other depending on the vocabulary word. All right, let's move on to multi letter problems. So these are challenging because there's one way to start it off. For example, um, x, y, and z, that'd be a linear pair. But I don't know how to solve things with three variables yet. Um, so we're going to look at the ones that repeat first. So what's the relationship between this and this? Okay. Those would be on the same side of the transversal. So here's my transversal. They're on the same side. They're also on the inside of those lines. So that means they're same side interior. I know same side interior 180 degrees. So I can set up an equation. So y minus 18 and y plus 12, those should equal 180 degrees, okay? So then you would combine like terms and get 2y um, minus 6 equals 180, add 6, 2y equals 186, divide by 2, and get 93. So y would equal 93. So then I'm going to plug it back in. So 93 subtract 18. That means that this is 75 degrees. And then the other one is 105 degrees. Okay. So now I need to figure out how much z is. Okay. Or x. X would probably be the first one you could find. I know this box means 90. So if I want to bump that because they're corresponding. So X and 90 are corresponding angles. So I can go ahead and say, hey, I know X is 90 degrees. Um, then we can also say I have nav linear pair or I have multiple. I know that would be a line. I know lines are 180 degrees. So 180, take away 90, take away 75. That should be what's remaining for Z, which would be 15 degrees. So I know Z is 15. Um, I could double check my answer. Um, because 75 and 15 should also be a right angle. And 75 plus 15 does give you 90. So I have solved for x, y, and z, okay? Uh, moving on to my other one. Um, here are my parallel lines. And then this will be my transversal. Be trying to trick you with the triangle. Um, so I have x here and I have an x here. So I'm gonna have to deal with my x's first. So I don't wanna set up a system yet. So the relationship between both of these angles would be a linear pair. So I know 3x plus 5 and 6x minus 14 is going to equal 180 degrees because it's a linear pair. So after combining like terms, you would get 9x minus 9 equals 180. Add 9. 
9x would equal 189. And 189 divided by 9 will be 21. So x is 21. Now I'm going to just substitute it back in to figure out what y is. And you can kind of do this problem two different ways. You can either use this angle and say, hey, I know those are corresponding and they're equal. Or you could use this angle and this angle and say, hey, that same side interior, I know they equal 180. So it's kind of up to you. It's whatever one you feel is easier. I'm going to do it to the top one. So 21 times 3 and then add 5. So I know this angle is 68 degrees. I know these are the same. So y plus 8 would equal 68. Subtract 8. So I know y is 60. Okay. That's how you would solve for x and y. Remember, I'll also show you how you can do the other way. So I knew x was 21. So 6 times 21 would be 112. And so that angle would be 112. So another way of setting it up is you could have said y plus 8 plus 112 would equal 180. So 112 plus 8 will be 120. Subtract 120, and you would get y plus 16. So you get the same thing. Um, so it's multiple ways to do the problem. It's how you see it and how you think best. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions on those. Um, so if you're watching this in 2018, it's because I forgot to add this page, these two pages, and I'm sorry. Um, your page should say this next. But I am going to walk through these, so if you want to follow along, this should actually be a try it on your own. Um, so if I know AB is parallel, so I've got these are my parallel lines. I actually have two transversals. So I have one transversal here. So these are my vocabulary words. That would be parallel. I also have another transversal up here. So I could use my angle relationships with those, but I couldn't bump in between. So for example, 1 and 8 are not corresponding, okay, because those lines weren't parallel. So it's only along the transversal that your vocabulary words that we learned are formed. So for example, I know 1 is 78, and I know 2 is 47, okay? So, based off of that, I can figure out all these measurements of the angles. I'm going to start with 78, and I see two linear pairs formed. So, I have a linear pair here, and I have a linear pair there. So, I'm going to do 180 minus 78 to get 102. So, I know 10 is 102. I also know 3 is 102 because it's vertical and or a linear pair. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bump to 4 and 5. So you can either say 78 and 4, they're same side interior. So I could say 180 minus 78. So I know 4 would be 102. You can also say that I know 10 and 4 are alternate interior and therefore they're congruent. So if 10 was 102, then 4 was 102. Um, 78 and angle 5, they're corresponding, so they're equal. So I could say 70, or angle 5 is 78. Or you could have used your knowledge of linear pair and known that 4 and 5 were a linear pair. So if 1 is 102, 180 minus 102 is 78. Okay? So now that I know those, I'm going to go ahead and erase them because I don't need them to figure out the top part of my numbers. Okay? So 2 and 7 are vertical, so 7 is also going to be congruent, so 7 is going to be 47. Um, if 7 is 47, got a linear pair, so it should equal 180. 180 minus 47 would be 133. Okay. I'm going to use 133 right now. I know that 9 and 6, that's a relationship we haven't really used so far, they're alternating, and they're on the exterior. So they're alternate interior or exterior angles. 
they're congruent. So I could say 9 is 133. Um, I knew 2 was 47. So 8 and 2 are alternating on the inside. So 8 would be 47 as well. Okay? That's one way of doing this problem. That's how my brain went through the process. Um, you can use tons of different ways to figure out all of your angle relationships. All right. Um, this one. Uh, given that line M is parallel to line M, I want you to solve for X. So I know this is parallel and this is parallel, which means Y would be your transversal. So this angle and this angle. There is absolutely no vocabulary word I have to describe that relationship. So what do I do? Okay. First off, you can move things around. Totally legal to move them around. To move them closer so that you do have a relationship. So, for example, if you wanted to, you can move this angle on the inside because it's vertical and they're the same. So, if that equation is 17x plus 9, so is this one. Okay? Now that you've done that, we can ignore this. And I now know a relationship between these two angles. Okay? They're same side interior, so they equal 180. So, if something doesn't look like it has a relationship, you can move them around based off of things being congruent only. Um, to create a new equation. So for some time's sake, I'm actually going to skip this one, but just let you know you can move things around closer if they're congruent. All right. Lastly, we have a fun challenge problem. I love parallel lines cut by transversals because you can move them around and do fun things. So notice that X and M are parallel. Where's X? X and M are parallel. And then Z and Y are parallel. So then knowing these two angle measurements, you can find them all, okay? So go ahead and try them on your own. Press pause, and then I will pop up all the answers. Here are all the answers. Um, so look through them. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, doing these problems down here are pretty easy to do. Um, the complicated part to get up to this problem, I knew five, two and... Um, Eight were corresponding, and so I bumped this up to 58 right here. Um, same thing here, they're vertical. Um, then I kind of bumped over here knowing that this was 111, that this remaining angle was 69, and then therefore I could bump back up here to 7, knowing these were alternate um, interior angles, and then I used my knowledge of a linear pair. Um, to figure out that 180 minus this minus this would give me 53. So that's how I figured out all those pieces up here. Um, this was pretty easy to figure out knowing 111. Um, the complicated part was ignoring this piece. So 2 and 16 are corresponding. So I can ignore all of this to know that they're corresponding because L and X were parallel. So once you knew that this was 58, then you could figure out all those four numbers. Then I used my knowledge um, of a triangle, actually, to figure out what 53 was, or you could know that 6 and 15 were alternate interior angles as well. So again, you can use your knowledge of a triangle, which you don't quite have yet, but I knew that triangles equaled up to 180 um, to solve it. So that's parallel lines cut by a transversal. I'm doing it algebraically, so let me know if you have any questions.